So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my client uh, has protective cream on. We've taken all the precautions. I have my apron, I have my gloves on. My client is double draped for a chemical slash color procedure, which is a non-porous drape. Double draped, we got our two, our two towels covering the client. Also, when it comes to color services, if you have a client that wears really expensive clothes, uh, you could also uh, have a couple of client smocks available. So I have had clients uh, change out of their clothes into a smock, uh, and then I drape them, double drape them accordingly as well to for that extra safety if they're wearing it really expensive clothes or clothes that is like tan or light in color. Okay, with that being said, I'm putting on my protective cream. So my, uh, my protective cream has been applied. I'm gonna go ahead and mix my lightener. I'm going to check my manufacturer's directions. And I'm gonna make sure I uh, mix in accordance with my manufacturer's directions. Let me make sure my, my neck of my client's a little small there. So it looks like we've loosened up. Oop, let me get that tightened again. Let me get my double drape tightened. Boom, boom. Get on there. Stay on there. There we go. Boom. Okay, fixed. Again, when it comes to my mixing procedure, I'm aware of uh, how I'm mixing. I'm making sure that my product container only holds uh, to the top level. I'm not overflowing in my scoop. That way I get a proper measurement. Before I pour that into my bowl, I'm making sure I measure out my developer. My bowl has measurements on it, so I'm going to mix at a at about a two, um, a one and a half to two parts developer, uh, one part lightener. I'm making sure I get an even consistency in my lightener. And I'm making sure everything gets mixed in, that there's no granules. Yeah. And you can see we have about the consistency of yogurt. That is good. extra towel on me in case I get lightener on my hands or on my gloves. You want to make sure that uh, you're working with clean hands and uh, you wipe away any product that might have gotten accumulated on there before you begin. Uh, get my brush. All right. So I'm going to get in a space here where we can see. Oop. That's good. Okay, so we're gonna be utilizing our angles. Uh, you have your, your foils pre-torn and uh, you will 
be utilizing the uh, back combing technique uh, in order to keep yourself organized. If you wanted, uh, you could make sure that you get your hair all nice and clear. You make sure that your sections, uh, your sections are nice and clean of your diagonal sectioning. See how I got a nice clean diagonal section there? And you may use the uh, back brushing technique. You want to make sure your sectioning is consistent. My sectioning on the bottom is a little thick. So I took it out of the equation. You may back brush, back comb. those areas, that way you get a less visible line of demarcation when you apply. Making sure you're placing your foil. You have your product on your brush. I would start about mid shaft. Because you know that mid shaft, you're getting the um, more saturation. And then you can go ahead and uh, hair paint and feather it into close to your teased area. You don't want to overlap product into the area that's been teased because then you'll get spots and you want to make sure that uh, your application saturation is less as you get to the top of your foil. See that? It's been feathered in, the saturation uh, has been pushed through all the way to the ends and instead of folding my foil I am placing another foil just on top okay I want things to process evenly throughout all parts of the head so I'm going to repeat this step on the other side in the same diagonal uh, formation. Oop, dropped a clip. That's okay. Got another one. There we go. All right, I'm checking my subsection here. I'm noticing I'm a little thicker on the bottom. Sectioning that back out. I have my diagonal section. Again, symmetry is important, so you want to make sure your sections are similar uh, on each side. You want to make sure you're taking similar diagonals, so that way you get consistency throughout the hair. Again, back brushing my areas, spreading the hair so I have an even distribution. There you go. 
again, getting my product, controlling my product, making sure I'm applying to the mid shaft of the hair first because that's where the saturation gets pushed all the way through. Notice how I'm taking the product and I'm taking the extra product and really pushing it through the ends before I start to creep up to those, to the line of, of where I have um, back brush. So I'm applying the bulk of my product still to the mid shaft and I'm using the tip, almost the tip of my brush to create the, the transition using the tip of my brush. I'm not allowing the product to build up or create um, any sort of product residue at the top. So you want to make sure you're mindful of how you gather that product near the top of the hair. The reason being is that if you put a big chunk of lightener at the top and then you press that foil on, you're going to create a, uh, a splotch or um, a hard transition, if you will. So once you've put in uh, your, v, your V shape in the back, the, the final uh, piece in the back is a center piece of the most center piece. So you take your center piece in the center here between your two V's. So you have your center piece right here. You want to back comb that as well. You want to check for consistency. There we go. Comb through to make sure you, your hair is pulled evenly taut throughout. You're back combing uh, the area to blur, to blur the line. Some clients will be easier to back comb than the others because they'll have more layers or breakage or different lengths of hair. Back combing different lengths of hair is usually a lot easier than one length. So if you um, have someone with a lot of layers, you won't have to back comb much. You'll just kind of do it and it'll do it itself. Notice I'm still holding the hair taut, picking up my product about mid shaft, using my product to paste it down to the foil. I'm placing my hands behind the foil making sure the product gets pushed through the ends and I'm creeping it up. As I move up, I'm getting, when I gather, gather more product, I'm get, gathering a minimal amount of product and I'm slowly creeping it up. So as the saturation uh, is less so at the top than it is at the bottom, protecting my subsection with the foil, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and skip to the front just so you can, so we can see what's happening in the front because again, I'm gonna be running out of foils. And also, um, depending, depending on uh, your client's head of hair during the consultation, uh, you might determine that your hair, that the hair of your client is indeed resilient and you would have to, uh, you would have to make sure that you're processing evenly throughout. All right, where did, okay. And uh, this type of sectioning on the sides, it's a uh, diagonal, it's a diagonal forward sectioning on the sides. And uh, what determines on the diagonal forward where it stops is the parietal ridge. 
So the parietal ridge is right at the curvature of the side of the head where it starts to curve to the top, right? So your diagonal forwards on the sides uh, will align with the flatness of the parietal ridge. So you want your section uh, to be able to sit flat, meaning that your comb can sit up against the side of the head and none of the section is curving into itself. With that being said, you can go in with your uh, diagonal forward. Again, you want to observe your, your sectioning. So your sectioning is uh, not extremely thick, but when it comes to balayage, uh, when it comes to balayage, you may uh, have to um, take th thicker sections because you don't want the saturation to go all the way through in the sectioning. So I'm just taking a little extra clip to control my hair there. Um, if Depending on your client on how close they want this to the root or if they want this to showcase more or less, uh, you may choose to paint on the front or the back of this sectioning. It's um, really up to you and how your client uses the hair. If they want something more subtle, uh, you, would, you would paint on this side. If they want something that's a little bit more bold and visible, you can paint from the front side. I'm going to, um, I'm gonna go ahead and paint from the front side because I want my client to be able to see it when she pulls it back. So I'm gonna place my foil here. I have back combed her area, picking up my product. Again, uh, making sure that we are at mid shaft. I'm controlling my hair, pushing it through the ends. That product is pasting it down. I'm playing with my saturation as I get to the front. And notice that as I'm applying, I'm, a, I'm methodically applying, meaning that I'm giving it a bit of a shape. I'm not just putting the product on, I'm literally um, like painting on how I want this to display with my saturation and I'm going in, I'm, I'm like whisping, whisking it in, and I'm going in a bit of a shape of a W. So I'm creating zigzags. And then there we go. Protected. And then uh, the same would go for the other side. You would uh, section the side in accordance with the parietal ridge. You are allowed to uh, have your little extra metal clips to uh, control the hair and hold it out of the way as you're back brushing your subsections. Again, con controlling the hair, controlling the product is key. All right, and uh, similar to my front end, I am going to be applying the product on the front piece of the diagonal forward. Starting at the mid shaft, my foil is a little shorter than my length, so I'm just folding the hair, making sure I get proper saturation. And as I work my way up to the sides, 
I'm making sure that my saturation is less at the top than it is on the sides. I'm creating a consistent shape. See? More saturation, less saturation, and you can't see really a line of demarcation from where I'm applying. You can see that it just kind of starts to peek out and I'm not overlapping into any of my uh, back combed areas. And there you have it. So um, on the top, so I'm going to go ahead and transition to the top now. The top, we also are utilizing diagonal lines that follow the hairline. Same, uh, same technique where you are back brushing the area. Again, with these techniques, less is more. Um, it went in doubt, put less on your brush and go back for more because if you splotch too much on, then you have to wipe it off and uh, you have to make sure that there's no product residue so you don't get any holidays, spots, or splotches. And again, I'm playing special close attention to how I'm applying as I get closer to my back brushed areas and I'm making sure I'm methodically uh, applying in a way where it would, the transition uh, would be seamless. So uh, making sure that you spread the hair so it gathers in a way that is evenly dispersed is also really important when it comes to performing the balayage uh, because if you back brush and you clump up hair in one region um, and then you apply that lightener, it, you have a chance of having like a streak or a piece that is uh, really intense. So you wanna make sure that once you back brush the hair, you have just redistributed the hair in a way that um, when you apply the product, it's going to help you instead of do you a disservice.
See how I took the extra hair and just folded it and made sure I pushed the product in? Also, the same principles of folding your foil are kind of into play when you're applying. You want to make sure your application uh, is your product. You're not having goops or uh, globs of product just sitting in certain areas. You want everything fully covered, fully saturated, and you want the distribution even in the foil. All right. And uh, that final piece in the front, once you do your two diagonals that meet up with your, uh, with your lining, similar to the back, you would take your centermost piece. So you have two diagonals into a point, and then you have your centermost piece. And your centermost piece will also be back combed. Uh, I noticed that I had a little bit of lightener on the tip of my comb. Not a problem, I just wipe it off and I get the uh, product and I wipe it off my client. When something like that happens, don't get mad at yourself. Literally just go up, oh, fix it, continue. Not a problem, the show must go on. You didn't make a mistake. Stuff is like frosting on a cake, you know? It takes time to learn how to manipulate your product to get your desired outcomes. All right, my kitties are mad. All righty. All right, so that's our last piece there, and coincidentally, it is almost my last foils. So you have a um, so you have an understanding of how you're using diagonals, and um, if you follow the chart that I'm about to post on Canvas, you just follow the diagonals all the way up with your back brushing uh, technique. Diagonal, diagonal, straight across, diagonal, diagonal, straight across until you get to the top where you are utilizing the diagonals around the parietal ridge. And you would be using the diagonals that go, that follow the hairline. Okay. And then we're going to watch this process out. And we'll see what we have. 